Ever heard of a technique in programming that's all about breaking down a problem into smaller sub-problems? Yes, that's dynamic programming. This strategy is a fundamental concept in computer science and software engineering, often applied in algorithm design. It's all about simplifying a complex problem by breaking it down into simpler, smaller parts. Imagine trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle. Rather than attempting to put together all the pieces at once, you'd break it down, perhaps starting with the corners and edges. That's pretty much how dynamic programming works. It's widely used in various fields, from data analysis to artificial intelligence, and even in game theory. It's like a secret weapon, helping us tackle hefty computational problems with more ease and efficiency. If you're ready to dive into the world of dynamic programming, stick around. You're in for an intriguing journey. Now, you may wonder what makes dynamic programming unique. Well, the answer lies in its two main properties, overlapping subproblems and optimal substructure. Let's start with overlapping subproblems. Imagine you're climbing a staircase. Each step you take is a subproblem. But here's the catch. To reach the third step, you can either climb two steps from the first or one step from the second. So, the problem of reaching the third step overlaps with the problems of reaching the first and second steps. This is what we call overlapping subproblems in the world of dynamic programming. Now let's move on to optimal substructure. Let's say you're on a quest to find the shortest path through a maze. You find a path, but is it the shortest? To answer that, you need to know if the subpaths you've taken are the shortest as well. If they are, then congratulations. You've found an optimal substructure. In other words, an optimal solution to the problem contains optimal solutions to its subproblems. So how do these properties help in solving problems more efficiently? Well, in the case of overlapping subproblems, dynamic programming saves time by solving each subproblem only once and storing the result, instead of solving it over and over again every time it's encountered. For optimal substructure, it allows us to construct an optimal solution to the problem from optimal solutions of its subproblems. So instead of trying out every possible solution, we're essentially narrowing down our search. It's like putting together a puzzle. Instead of attempting to fit every piece in every spot, you'd identify the corner and edge pieces first, right? That's your optimal substructure. Then you'd use those pieces to guide the placement of the rest. Reusing solutions you've already found, that's your overlapping sub-problems. And voila, you've just used dynamic programming to solve a puzzle more efficiently. So, dynamic programming is all about optimizing and saving computation time by utilizing these two properties. You've got the basics down. Now, let's understand the steps involved in dynamic programming. Picture this as a four-step dance with each move leading you smoothly to the next, ultimately taking you to your final destination, the solution. First up, we have identifying a problem. This is where we need to spot a situation that can benefit from dynamic programming. Typically, these are problems where we need to find an optimal solution, and there's a sense of overlapping sub-problems. Think of it as a journey where you find yourself repeatedly visiting the same locations. Now we move to the second step, defining the structure. Here we break down the problem into smaller, manageable sub-problems. Consider a puzzle where you separate the pieces before putting them back together. It's all about understanding the parts to see the whole. Step 3 is writing the recurrence relation. This is the mathematical heart of dynamic programming. Remember those sub-problems we talked about? Well, it's time to express them in terms of each other. It's kind of like creating a family tree, establishing relationships between the parts. Finally, we arrive at step four, creating a solution from the computed information. This is where we assemble the answers to our sub-problems to form the solution to the original problem. It's like baking a cake. You've got all your ingredients ready. Now, it's time to mix them together and pop them in the oven to produce a delicious dessert. So. To recap, we start by identifying a problem that's suited for dynamic programming. Then, we break it down into subproblems. Next, we establish relationships between these subproblems. And finally, we assemble the solutions to these subproblems to solve the original issue. These steps are your roadmap to solving any dynamic programming problem. Alright, we've covered a lot, but how do you master dynamic programming? Well, the secret ingredient here is practice, and plenty of it. Just like perfecting a musical instrument or a sport, it's about the time and effort you invest. Dynamic programming is no exception. It's all about starting small and gradually increasing the complexity of your problems. Begin with simple problems. As you solve them, you'll start to notice patterns, and you'll learn how to break down complex problems into smaller, manageable subproblems. This is the essence of dynamic programming. But practicing isn't just about solving problems. 
it's also about understanding them. Before you even touch your keyboard to write code, take a moment to thoroughly understand the problem at hand. Ask yourself, what are the sub-problems? How do they connect to the main problem? Can the problem be solved by combining the solutions of these sub-problems? This kind of thinking is what dynamic programming is all about. As you practice, you'll find that understanding the problem is half the battle. Once you've gotten the hang of this, you'll be ready to tackle more complex problems. And the more complex the problem, the more satisfying it is to solve. Now you might be wondering where to find problems to practice on. There are numerous resources out there. Websites like LeetCode, HackerRank, and CodeSignal offer a variety of problems at different levels of difficulty. You can also find textbooks and online courses that delve deep into dynamic programming. Remember, dynamic programming isn't something you master overnight. It's a skill that you build over time. It's about patience, persistence, and a lot of practice. Remember, mastering dynamic programming is a journey, not a destination. With consistent practice and a clear understanding of the concept, you'll be solving complex problems in no time.